oh, oh, tell me what you want, yeah Time. Long time. How are we? Oh, good. Find out that window case. Sorry, just in case. How are you? I'm alright. Ten years right. later. Ten years. Because <laughs> <laughs> when like when we first started working together, I was like a baby, and yeah. now that you're saying it's been a decade, how, how I'm. Old are you, you I was 18. I'm 29 now. Yeah. So I was 19. I like. It's so yeah. crazy. I at, like, at least you were 12 years old. As our previous features have been telling us about. I know they were 12 when, they when this to. album came out. Really? Yeah, it's mad. 12? It's mad. It literally, like, it probably was it, it was in this month that we're waiting on that, I think. It was April, May, when yeah. we put it out. And yeah. Then, and then basically, like, a week later, after the single came out and got to number one, the album came out um, and got to number one. Wow. And it was like, that year was just mad. That year really Very felt like the beginning like of a lot second, of things. Was it our second number one we'd had. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and then it, it was just everything from. The festival shows, but obviously leading up to the Brits, like the follow was it oh. two four yeah fourteen Brits yeah it was four, yeah. yeah fourteen yeah. fourteen yeah. fourteen was the album yeah and then with the Brits would have been in four, two, no it was fourteen, 14 for sure but yeah we won the Brit based on I just think that whole period was just life changing for, it fully was for everyone yeah. involved in the album mm. for and real not only us. It's just, uh, it was special. I don't think that's ever going to be sort of recreated, if I'm honest. It was the beginning of a lot of artists as well. Like, everyone yeah. that you've collaborated with has lasted 10 years. Isn't that mad? Like, I don't think when I started doing music and when Waiting One Night did what it did and we were on tour, that in 10 years' time, we were still going to be having this conversation. It's sick. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Very lucky. some of my favourite, like, festival moments. It's before For real? Waiting All Night with you. Oh, is it? I always remember it. No, yeah. one, no one quite done it like you. Oh. Obviously, it's, it's your song, but when other people came and sang it, like, it's, it's still good, but it just wasn't quite the same. Oh, I appreciate that. What I love about this song is is when you were on tour with us, and do you remember that, that Plan B tour? Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. So well. And basically, we hadn't decided what the next single was. Yes. And the, I remember yeah, the label were like, playing it. Play, do right here, whatever. And yeah. Like, which is also a big tune, but. That, that we we just were playing this live and the reaction reaction that we saw at the crowd yeah mm. um supporting we like third support was it plan b then labyrinth, yeah. labyrinth yeah and then us right? yeah and it was like the crowd reaction was just incredible yeah mm. and i remember that that's why we decided to put this song out next can you can you remember um i remember us being in the hotel lobby i don't know where we was and uh, we were talking about the next single and what the label wanted and what we wanted and I was screaming down the place. I was like, fuck, <laughs> this has to be the fucking single. No, I do remember no, you no, being no, really no, adamant. I remember how, how, how sure of it. We were, and yeah. we, were all, we were all so passionate about it, right? And we had to like literally put our foots down with the label and basically sh shout at them yeah. and, and be like, you can't put anything else out but this song. Um, and they basically, yeah, had to had to listen to us. And thank, I mean, yeah. like it's mad. Like it then went on to do what it did. Yeah. And it's still now, this is the mad thing about this song, is like, it will still destroy the festival now. Yes! And, and, and yeah, still be the, one of the best, yeah. if true. not the best song that we play. Yeah. But it's always between this and Feel the Love. Yeah. New, <laughs> until John Newman gets in the car and he's in your seat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's my song, it was my song. That was the biggest one. But you know, like, it, 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 I, to be honest, like, I think that whole time, it really like, what I really appreciate is how um it was so fast but we, we 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 sort of really had these gut feelings that we we really made yeah. like the best music I, I think um and really it was like an opportunity that was laid out in front of us and we all like went for it yeah. which i really like i loved i love like remembering those times for that like us like Make, putting out that music, yeah. making that album, and doing it all so quickly in like six months. It was a bit of a crash course for me as well. I was like, going, oh shit, that must have been mad. <laughs> that like, was the mm. first song I'd ever put my voice on, like right. that I'd ever, mm. you know, put my name on. 
and then you know it set the bar i to be honest guys it's, it's i've had a lot of therapy for it because like <laughs> to start at the very top to go to mm. number one and then win a brit when i was 19 oh. years old and i yeah, hadn't put yeah, my voice yeah, on anything yeah, else yeah, yeah. it was like you know I, it's, it's gonna be a hard moment to beat forever yeah. for it to be honest because it was yeah. like a really organic it just happened it was meant to be we're all in the right place at the right time and mm -hmm. do you remember i remember this really vividly that it was the week that um pharrell uh, had dropped yeah not happy uh, was it, uh, yeah. No, what was uh, it? with daft punk yeah, it's a Daft Punk um, album, the single came. Wow. Yeah, and it, that song ended yeah. up being number get one. Lucky. For, lucky. Got lucky, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ended up being number one for weeks. And yeah. if we hadn't have been number one that week, yeah, yeah, yeah. we wouldn't have made it. We slipped in there. Just got in. We yeah. just got, and like, the difference is mad. Yeah. And it was just, yeah, it was so cool. And then that Brit performance. I forgot about that. Yeah, the Brit performances. Do you remember? Well, was, it was us awesome and Bastille, right? Yeah, so <laughs> so but it was random. great. Man's laughing there. <laughs> <laughs> but it was random. It's it like was. We did two songs, like yeah. two bands. Merged. Two songs. Merged as well, wasn't yeah. it? And, like, yeah, it, it was, was merged, yeah. Like two was... bands from completely different worlds Wait. kind of thing. People still um, talk to me about that, though. Yeah. That's like a memorable Brit performance. It kind of worked, just about. Yeah, it did. <sighs> I've also got ladies. Hello. I wish they were doing this This is your cousin's video, Kez. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Brick Covered Feel the Love in Holland for yeah. the acoustic. Yeah. Yeah. I would that cover that sick. song for the I love that, that song. That was so that, sick. That, that version of it was special, man. Like, it's a bit early for that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Not round here. Not round here. It's very normal. But, yeah. I'll just say, like, all the gigs that we've done, I feel like I've just got no memory of them. It takes yeah. little things yeah. for me to remember them. I totally off agree. Off stage, though. It has to be off stage yeah. for me. It's like, Bonkers. my band surprise me all the time when they're like, do you remember that gig when we did this? And it's amazing. I just sometimes feel like my brain is like a sieve, but we just yeah, do yeah. so many shows. So many, so many shows. Remember. It really is, but like... So much promo, so much... You, we're, yeah. we're busy. Yeah, we're busy. <laughs> yeah, man. But that, that touring world at the, at the very beginning for me, like, really set the bar. Like, Trust. you guys always was, set, like, like... We had such a, like, 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 you, um, Tom Jewel, like yeah. Emanike, like we had um, Sinead and that whole team at one point we, we, we all were on stage it was it Happy Weekend or we would do that all together I think we did and it was like we had a great lineup of talent and, and um, mm. uh, it like it really was a time of, of um, I always like to compare it to like the 90s of Man United but just like that <laughs> like, it, the, the, the talent was there's so much talent coming through like it felt like there was a, the scene was buzzing of, of singers and songwriters yeah that I feel like we were just at the center of and, and were able to tap into yeah. and 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 it was such a exciting creative time for the music industry I think um you know there was like us disclosure and um, I remember that Annie Mac tour yeah right we we were all on Oh, that Animat tour, that, like, mate, that sticks in my head because I remember we did, we did three shows off the bounds and the first show was Manchester, no, first show was Liverpool and then the second show was Manchester mm. and I went on stage, no, it was Leeds, sorry. So the first show was Liverpool and the second show oh. was Leeds yeah. and I stepped on Leeds stage and oh, I said, yeah. what's going on Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> And then everyone on stage looked at me. Everyone looked at me. And I said, like, what? What happened? And then I could just see like all these angry fans looking at me and just booing me. 
I had to flip it. I was always good at flipping it. I just said, oh, I was just testing you. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, you've been very good at recovery. Yeah. Do you remember that? Because um, um, we've needed a lot of recovery. <laughs> 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 of recovery. You used to say my name wrong all the time. Oh, shit, I was yeah. telling I the story remember. yesterday. Because <laughs> like, I, in hindsight, I wish I listened to you. Maybe it was a sign. You kept calling me Ella Irie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's a sick I name, to like be it, fair. Though, yeah. Yeah. I need to rebrand. Do you remember that Australian <laughs> tour where um, it was really hot and you passed out pretty much? Yes, yeah. I will never forget that. We were in Australia, mm. Perth. And mm. I remember because we were on the last song, oh. Feel the Love. Mm. And at the end, the encore was super loud, long because we were just getting the crowd to sing it over mm. and over again. And I just remember going, I'm going to go. I'm gonna go, <laughs> and I was like walking backwards towards where we come off, just like hoping that it must like, be like forty oh, degrees. Yeah, yeah, it was. We were in direct sunlight in the oh. middle of the day, and that was. I will never forget that because yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was scary. Yeah. Man, it's mind boggling though. It's like you're 18 years old. You've come on tour with us in a period where we have literally just gone global, <laughs> traveling to the other side of the world, Australia. You. <laughs> you were strong, stronger 18 year old than I ever was <laughs> to do that. How scary must that have been? I remember oh. I had to do the first show in Australia and um, I think I might have done it by myself. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time getting on a 24 hour flight. Uh. Like, man, did you not find it scary? Mm, do you know what? I just sort of went with the flow. Yeah. And like, I think because. I just, when I started doing music and when I, you know, when I, growing up, right, I never thought I was going to be doing music and artists because I, I had no one around me to ever make that think that that was a possibility. Like, I didn't have people, like, that were producers in my family or anything like that. So then, like, when I got a manager, mm. I was like, wow, this is cool. And then, like, when we did, we, we came on tour together, we worked together, I was like, wow, this is cool. And then when we went to Australia, I was like, wow, this is cool. And it's <laughs> only when I come back and, like, I came off this tour and I started doing my own thing and maybe, like, five years later, I was like, that was a wild time. Crazy time. And like, it was so cool. And I think I probably took it for granted in a sense of like, I should have made more mo- like, more of an effort to remember things or write mm. things down and take pictures mm. and like, you know, stories yeah. that I'll forget about that I'll, someone else has to remind me. But yeah. like, I don't know, I, I would do it again. I don't no, know about you, yeah, I would definitely. do it again. I'll do it again, I'll do it again Bust then. Out <laughs> <laughs> now, well, we're still doing it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, later, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I feel like, I, to be honest, I feel like if it was worth, if it was worth remembering, would you remember it? I don't know, sometimes people have to jog my memory. Yeah. But I, I feel like your body really does, your brain does hold on to the important ones. For sure. And like, it's hard these days with all the clouds and stuff. It's like, I don't have the same phone as I did in 2000. Yeah. There's so much lost photos and videos, yeah. you know, because the clouds weren't really around then. Yeah. Mate, you was there. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. yeah. That's There's it. so many of us that are not living in the moment these days. Yeah. Regardless, they're living through their phones. So much let, yeah, yeah, totally that. Yeah, so we were there. We we lived it. We thrived off it. We're still here it. now. Definitely lived, lived it. It was such a fun time. I do look back with really fond memories because it was just like my life completely changed. Just really, actually, by meeting you guys. To be fair. Yeah. I think, I think all of us did. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> meeting ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we were going to be doing it again, right? 5th of August. Yes. I'm actually gassed. Like, I feel like, like I said earlier, you guys set the bar for me with live shows. Like, when I went off and did my own thing, like, it was mm. really important for me to love my band, yeah. to get on, like, family. Like, if anyone's, like, not fitting in, like, they got to yeah. go. Because it, it, it's all, if you're, squad, you're on the road, yeah. if you're going to last, if there's yeah. any longevity, you have to like where you are and who you're with. Because you can't always like where you are. <laughs> But, um, I love that because I, I don't like most people. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, to be fair though, like you guys are in a band, you don't well, have you a can, choice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't suck him. <laughs> yeah. You can feel it though, like when, when I came and saw you perform at different festivals and stuff, you could see that you was enjoying it. You could see that your band were enjoying it. So it's important though. So important. So important. That was a massive lesson. That just like, translates to the crowd, you know? Yeah, for we real. always We always live by the fact that it's not a case of our audience is coming to see us and you know we're coming to perform you're part of this show yeah. you know and we've always stood by that and it's a, it's something like it's a pleasure to hear the fact that you've taken that into your own show yeah and like we've watched john we've watched all the other artists and you can see that there's elements of that vibe definitely in there which is wicked 
Yeah, I mean, I often think, you know, if I hadn't, if we hadn't have been on tour together, how my live show would have gone because mm. I just had nothing to compare it to. Mm. And luckily for me, I, I had the best comparison ever because we really were like a tight unit and we did like those early morning roll calls and like get mm. down to the lobby calls and flights. Uh, radio and, in Australia, yeah, radio in Belgium. Yeah, back to back. Yeah. I always remember that. Um, Radio One Live Lounge with Annie Mac, where you play, where you, where we play Jeez. Wait the Night, you just and played I'm it. That silly tracksuit. Yeah. Wait, no, you can fuck off, okay? Because <laughs> your management didn't tell us that it was filmed, and then my it's label, it, and then my, le my label lost it no. when they saw me in that Dunlop jumper. They no. lost it. They're like Dunlop. Yeah, but okay, look at you now. That's kind of cool now. No, it's it's iconic now. Ahead. It was ahead iconic. Of, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Ten Wait, years ahead um, of. What was I wearing? Some in the green. Was it a green? I can't remember. Was it a green tracksuit? Like Adidas tracksuit? Like, I think it was wow. like white, green, red, yellow. Nah, it this, wasn't. This, was it, are we talking oh. about the same thing? The grey one. This was one of my favourite oh. things we ever did. I don't know if it's the same thing. There is two. Ten years ago. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we come from like a DJing culture and then kind of fused into like whatever. Yeah. And just seeing how it gets executed, it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's sick. so good. That, I actually haven't watched that for years. Yeah, no, I, think, I wasn't same. thinking of this one. I was thinking yeah, of the first one. Yeah, I was thinking one. of the, that yeah. Was the first one. one. Yeah, with the way you were the green tracks. The that green one track, I was yeah. prepared. I actually dressed that one. The other one, you, uh, we were doing a gig in Lund Village Underground. And then you like last minute were like, Ella, you need to come to uh, Radio One. We're doing waiting all night. And I just turned up in my tracksuit, thinking it was just gonna be like a quick. We've been, we've done so many of them where you just yeah. turn up, it's sing, true, yeah. and you go. Well, yeah. But the thing about the thing about that one, that original one, is that all the things that the label were probably upset about, management upset yeah. about it being filmed. Or actually helped it go viral i agree which is bonkers yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean because if we tried shit, all the styling we, yeah. sometimes it's just too, too much. much exactly and we just turned up we did our thing we it was raw it was sick if i may so say myself and people loved it it's raw. yeah yeah, yeah my Dunlop jumper. <laughs> I'll speak Dunlop bad on Dunlop. Dunlop. Dunlop Dunlop after that. It, honestly, I have trauma because <laughs> people were commenting on underneath going, why is she wearing a Dunlop jumper? Why is she wearing a... Now it's historical, but it? at the time it was damaging. Wow. My young brain. Oh, tell me what you want, I used to love the tracks, to be fair. That yeah, started from that a, a, that was a, rehearsal, that was a jam from a rehearsal, yeah. wasn't it? Was it a rehearsal? Yeah. I thought it was a sound yeah, check. Yeah. 
I thought, that, I thought it started no, off in terminal. Some, yeah, it was at rehearsal. I and thought Tom brought like, his dog that day. We was playing around in rehearsal. Yeah. And like, it was on record. God, and we just turned it into a little... Too Cool To Love Me jam. In a little... Oh, yeah. that's it, yeah. And then we made the solo. But was it Too Cool For Love Me for... Wasn't it done at a sound check? That's where the original yeah, idea yeah, came yeah. from. Recording Maybe we'd... I think it originated, it originated in a rehearsal. In, you know, and then yeah, we did it on... a sound check. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it might probably go the wrong way around. I just remember Thomas Jules bringing his dog. to do with golf because I'm heavily into golf now. Is it? I can't stop playing. Oh my god. And uh, they were talking about the, the, the times that you play the best golf is when you've got that right level of focus yeah. and right level of not being focused. Yeah. You know, you're just in yeah. that sort of period of just not really thinking about it but you're still in it. Yeah. And if there's any artist out there, if you can stay in that zone, I don't know, there's probably a a proper name for it but if you can stay in that zone it's the best yeah especially for creativity and just oh, 100%. yeah it's a mad world man yeah, we're man. still here we are still here we are i remember the first time you ever came to our studio really it's for a session and you just sat there playing you played the ukulele right? yeah <laughs> i was like this is one of the best voices i've ever heard oh like, thank seriously. you no, so sweet. can you bring out a song just on the ukulele do you know what i actually I, I got a ukulele again yeah. two Shut weeks up. ago yeah, I haven't played it probably since then. Yeah. And then I got one for my birthday and I was like, This is it. a sign. Bring out it a is. single. Yeah. You just play it. Hey, look, anything to get me posting on social media because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I ain't got time for that. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, right so always it. a pleasure. Always. Never a chore. Thank you. I'm we'll actually see really looking of, forward to the show. Of August. Let's bring August. it back like Ooh. we always do. It's going to be a vibe. Yeah, well. Take care, take guys. Care. Love you, Ella. Bless. She's made me excited for the fifth of August. Yep. Yeah, boy.